Alright, so we are drawing a cross section through a leaf. And, and this time, this is a stereotypical monocot leaf for a C4 plant. So um, if you remember, a C4 plant has a stereotypical Kranz anatomy. And that Kranz anatomy is going to uh, have very well-defined uh, bundle sheath cells which outlines our vascular tissue and then inside this ring of bundle sheath we will see um, xylem and phloem within there. And since this is uh, kind of your stereotypical grass plant, if you think about how it's growing um, it really doesn't have a top and a bottom. Um, these are more running perpendicular to the earth and to the sun. And so both sides of the leaf could be hit by direct sunlight. Um, and so unlike with the C3 plant or our typical eudicot plant that we drew for the cross section, um, both the top and the bottom here are not dif differentiated from one another. And so it can just be referred to as epidermis. And then um, all the way throughout, in the middle for mesophyll, mesophyll So we don't have those distinct layers within the mesophyll like we did in the eudicot. So we have our bundle sheath with our vascular tissue inside. Remember the bundle sheath is where rubisco will be uh, sequestered away from oxygen. And then here we have some fibers that are helping to give that great big mid vein some support. All right, and here we have a huge mid vein with those fibers. And we still have the bundle sheath cells towards the outside kind of helping to give that some definition. And then one of the reasons why I, why I like to focus my drawing at that mid vein is that the vascular tissue is easier to distinguish, I think, in that area. So we have, for example, really large circles of vessel element on each side with that thick secondary cell wall kind of stained a little reddish. Um, we've got uh, smaller vessels, maybe some tracheids, um, in that nose ridge region. Um, so the vessel elements are a little easier, or the xylem is a little easier to pick out. And then we have um, the phloem on the other side of this that has much thinner, uh, more delicate uh, primary cell walls only. And um, in the monocot, I think you can kind of distinguish the difference between uh, the companion cells and the sieve tube element. So the companion cells are the smaller ones. You can often see a nucleus inside there, um, while, whereas the the uh, sieve tube elements are much larger around without a nucleus. And so you can kind of see those in there uh, in, the, in that region. So we have the phloem here and then the xylem on the other end. The last thing that I want to bring your attention to is on the epidermis itself we have some special cells called the guard cells and 
I tend to kind of look to see where I have air spaces in my mesophyll and that usually kind of helps me pick out where those uh, guard cells are. Um, so the mesophyll you kind of see uh, some thin walled parenchyma uh, probably filled with chloroplasts um, in this region and then you'll in the mesophyll and then you'll kind of see a, a space between those parenchyma near where the the guard cells are and so sometimes it's easier to pick out the guard cells based on the missing uh, parenchyma cells so where you see kind of uh, air pockets and those guard cells just like elsewhere will control the opening and closing of the stoma and sometimes they seem to be stained a little bit differently than the rest of the epidermis and that's because they would be filled with uh, chloroplast Okay, so just to make sure we have a label on everything, a phloem in each one of these veins is a lighter colored, much thinner cell wall. The thicker cell wall cells, those will be the xylem, and the whole vein will be surrounded by a bundle sheath, and uh, all of the mesophyll will be filled with parenchyma cells. On each side we have the epidermis, which is a type of dermal tissue. Uh, the large midvein is also supported by fibers, which is a type of sclerenchyma tissue. And then um, on the outside everywhere we have some waxy cuticle to help protect our leaf.